Chapter 60 The 18 Levels of Hell, 2, You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Tui Dao's snake-like gaze was engrossed watching Ning Xuema's reaction. Seeing that her expression finally changed, he felt an abnormal amount of glee and chuckled. Little girl, you might not recognize her, but she's famous in our Chong Kong country. Since she was young, she possessed a heavenly talent in psychokinesis. Even the second most powerful sect, the Heavenly Star sect, took notice of her. She entered the sect and became one of the three law enforcement disciples and also became the pride of our Chong Kong country. Unfortunately, she must have learned from the wrong people, because she actually went to the imperial palace to steal the princess things and was caught red-handed by our princess and got sent here. She is very hard-headed and doesn't want to confess. That's why she's suffering so much. TSK, TSK. Why did she even bother? Tu Dao shook his head and sighed. I, I didn't steal. It was Ji Yunyao who framed me. Even though that girl was in so much pain, she was still conscious and tried to defend herself. Tisk, TSK. It looks like you haven't suffered enough and need me to personally step in. Tu Dao smiled coldly and slowly moved his wheelchair closer to the young woman. You freak, just kill me. That girl cried out. Pretty girl, you haven't confessed yet. How could I bear to kill you? Allow me to properly. Attend it to you. Tu Dao brought out a knife with a blade as thin as a cicada's wing, and as his long icy fingers gripped her delicate face, he lightly sighed. What a pretty and delicate face. If I peeled it off and made a human mask out of it, oh how wonderful would that be. Rest assured. I won't rip or tear your face up. I'll peel it off completely. That girl's body shuddered as she heard those words, but she could only grit her teeth. Indeed, her character was quite strong. Apart from her two arms, nearly all the bones in her body had been broken. If she had not been nailed onto the wall, she would not have been able to stand at all. Her cultivation had already been wasted. Even if she carried on living, she would be a useless person. What Tu Dao wanted was not the truth. He only wanted the desired outcome. Hence, telling him that you had been wronged was of no use. Ning Xuema's palms boozed cold sweat. Could it be that she would experience something similar tonight? Ning Xuema's eyes widened as she looked at Tu Dao gripping the handle of the knife and peeling off that girl's face little by little. L. C. The woman's miserable shrieks nearly pierced one's eardrums. Although Ning Xuema was courageous, upon seeing this, cold sweat soaked her body. That girl had fainted a few times, and each time she was woken up by a splash of a bucket of cold water. She was unable to live, yet unable to die. When she woke up with yet another bucket of ice. Cold water, she finally broke down. I'll confess. I'll confess. Just. Just kill me, please. Tu Dao smiled, filled with pride and compassion. Pitiful child, if you had done so earlier, would you have suffered so much? He had already prepared a written confession long ago. Now all he needed was for that woman to sign it. Ning Xuema finally understood why this sick freak had not broken her arms. It was because he wanted her to be able to sign the confession. The nails keeping her to the wall were taken out, and that girl slumped into the muddy ground as fresh blood started pooling under her body. Tu Dao waited until she signed it before he admired the confession for a bit with obvious satisfaction before folding it up in his pocket. He suddenly flicked his wrist and a knife embedded itself into the girl's heart. She shuddered as she breathed her last breath before finally ceasing to move. Take her, and toss her to the dogs. Tu Dao turned his wheelchair around and left disgustedly. That girl's body, which no longer resembled that of a human, was dragged out. Now, the only ones in the room were Ning Xuema, Tu Dao, and a few jailers. Chapter 61 Self, Rescue, 1, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Tu Dao shook the face that he had just peeled off in front of Ning Xuema and offered it to her. 
Little girl take a look at my artwork, does it meet the mark? Ning Shuema subconsciously retreated two steps back, her gaze fixed onto that peeled face. One had to say that Tu Dao truly had good handicraft and adept knife techniques. The peeled face was as thin as a cicada's wings with uniform thickness throughout. There weren't any tears or damages from the knife, making it completely intact. Are you scared, little girl? If you're scared, then you should obediently sign the confession. To tell you the truth, I really like that delicate face of yours too. If I peel it off, it would also be very pretty, Tu Dao's ice dot cold fingers nearly brushed against Ning Shuama's cheek. But then, he burst into evil and cruel laughter. I'll count to three. If you don't confess by then, I'll have to put you on the torture rack. All these jailers had long been influenced by Tu Dao and had their personalities warped into something almost as perverted as Tu Dao's. Now four pairs of eyes stared at her like wild beasts tracking their prey. They were prepared to immediately haul her off to the rack if she said even one word contrary to Tu Dao's wishes. Every night, your back aches painfully. The lumbosacral feels stiff as stone. The pain in your back and hip alternates intermittently, also radiating out to your thigh. Your back muscles experience spasms. Ning Shuema suddenly opened her mouth and spouted out a string of medical terms. These are the symptoms of spondylitis according to Baidu, the other jailers did not understand what Ning Shuema was saying, but Tu Dao's body abruptly stiffened. His triangular eyes shot out a blade dot-like gaze. Little girl, what did you say? Ning Shuema's eyes sparkled like pools of clear water. She slowly spoke, your legs are in a lot of pain, and there is a dull ache in your joints. They will slowly swell and deform. Three years later, they will lose all feeling and become as stiff as wood and stone. Tu Dao's eyes widened even more. His gaze towards Ning Shuema seemed as if he was looking at a freak. You. You. All those symptoms that Ning Shuema had described were exactly what he was experiencing. In the entire Chang Kong country, no one had been able to even identify his illness, much less how to cure it. He could only allow it to develop. This condition had tormented him for the past six years, but unexpectedly today, his illness was revealed from a little girl's mouth. His heart, which had originally lost hope, leaped. You know about this illness. Ning Shuema slightly smiled and nodded. I don't just know it, I can also cure it. Tu Dao, who was always calm as a stone, felt his hands tremble. How do you cure it? Let me go, and I'll give you the treatment to cure it. Ning Shuema spoke frankly. Tu Dao's triangular eyes flashed darkly. Little girl, you're really full of hot air. I have consulted many renowned physicians for my illness, but none of them knew the cure. And you're saying that you have the cure. I don't believe it. This humble girl can give you the treatment right here, right now. If there are no improvements, then I'll accept whatever punishment you give me. Tu Dao became lost in thought. Finally, he could not help agreeing and nodded due to the temptation. Fine. I will give you a chance. Ning Shuema looked at the shackles on her wrists. Then, can you order someone to prepare twenty silver needles and a few other things? She listed a whole string of items before stating her final requirement. Conducting the treatment requires delicacy, however, I have shackles on my wrists which would affect my ability to treat you. All those things she wanted were available in the Minister of Justice's prison, so Tu Dao quickly sent people to fetch them. The shackles on Ning Shuema's wrists were unlocked as well. Her ankles were still shackled, and adding to her non-existent talent in psychokinesis, it made Tu Dao confident that she will not attempt to do anything suspicious. Ning Shuema lightly smiled, and under the gazes of numerous jailers, she started to treat Tu Dao with acupuncture. Her movements were deft and swift. She previously learned her needle technique, a lost secret acupuncture art, in the modern world. This technique would show its effects shortly after its application. After finishing the treatment, she stood up. 
Within an hour, you will be able to feel the effect of the treatment. The effect will allow you to stand up. Tu Dao showed an expression of disbelief. These few years, he drank all kinds of medicine and underwent so many acupuncture treatments, but they, like mud sinking into the sea, were ineffective and useless. Chapter 62 Self, Rescue, 2, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. This little girl just needs to insert several needles and it could let him stand up. Ning Shuema ignored him and just sat down on one of the torture instruments, while minding her own business. She closed her eyes to rest, using every single minute and every second to heal herself. Dot very soon, an hour passed. Tu Dao felt heat traversing through his stiff waist before diffusing to his legs. Wherever the heat passed, the stiff and numb feeling slowly faded. In front of the eyes of the jailers, his legs suddenly moved. It moved. It moved. Sir, your legs moved. People exclaimed. Although Tu Dao's face was still gloomy, his hands could not help but tremble. There was feeling in his legs. He could really feel a sensation from his legs. He exerted all his strength to control his excitement. Slowly, he tried getting up from his wheelchair. Like a small child barely learning how to walk, he tottered a few steps forward. Although his legs tingled and felt painful, his heart bloomed with happiness. He could walk. After three years of being handicapped, he could finally taste the feeling of walking again. All the jailers congratulated him. Tu Dao took ten sluggish steps and sat back on his wheelchair, his face sinking. Little girl, although I can walk a few steps, the pain is now worse than before. It's not much use. Men, put her on the torture rack. When Ning Shuema had inserted the needles, he had carefully paid attention to where they were inserted. In the future, he could do it himself, he would not need to rely on this little girl. Furthermore, someone with extremely high status specially handed Ning Shuema's case to him. Even if you gave him eight times the courage, he would not dare to secretly let her go. She was not even supposed to live past tonight. Though those jailers did not understand why Tu Dao was doing this, they were used to following his lead without question. Immediately after hearing his order, they took large strides towards Ning Shuema, intending to capture her. Sir, I've just said that this short treatment was just a sample for you to test my abilities. In order to completely cure you, I will need to execute various different treatments. Ning Shuema spoke. Tu Dao became stunned for a moment, and he raised his hand to stop the jailers who were about to take action. What are the other treatment plans? Ning Shuema merely smiled and ceased speaking. Tu Dao once again paused before declaring coldly, I know that you have conditions. What are they? Don't expect me to release you though. I don't have the authority to make that decision. Ning Shuema lightly sighed. I also know that it's not possible for you to release me. I only have one request and that is not to torture me tonight. Do you agree sir? Tu Dao eyes lightly flashed as he deliberated. He did not directly answer Ning Shuema's question. Instead he asked her, how long will this additional set of treatments take? At least six hours. Ning Shuema answered. Tu Dao glanced at the hourglass. There were still eight hours left until daylight, which was when that person expected results. And two hours were enough for him to get her to sign the confession. He smiled as kind and as sincere as possible. Fine, I promise you. Ning Shuama's eyes glinted, but she displayed the expression of someone who got what she wanted on her face. Thank you, sir. Shuama will definitely give you the best treatment to completely cure you, so that you will never be plagued by this condition again. Tu Dao nodded his head and smiled amiably. That's good. I really like you little girl, so I'm letting you off for the night. Tomorrow morning someone might even come and rescue you. I think so too. I must say thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity. The smile on Ning Shuema looked like a blooming flower. Chapter 63 
pretending to be a pig to devour the tiger, 1. You are listening at novelfull.audio. 2. Idao comforted her, but he coldly sneered inside his heart. In the end, she was a little girl and still so naive. It was so easy to trick and coax her. The higher UPS had made it clear to him that he must use any means necessary to make her sign the confession tonight. After she signed the confession, he must immediately eliminate her. They will conveniently say that she killed herself out of guilt. Everything had already been arranged beforehand. This little girl was truly naive if she thought she could use her medical skills to bargain for her life. Nevertheless, this little girl proves to be a talent, but what a pity. He had already calculated. Ning Xuema would need six hours to treat him, which leaves him two hours to make her obediently sign the confession. Since he would already receive the treatment, he would be able to treat himself in the future without her help. This was really killing two birds with one stone. He feared that Ning Xuema would not put her full effort into healing him, hence when he talked to her, he was rather amiable and agreed to all her requests. For example, he allowed them to unlock all the shackles on her body, to gather all sorts of medical equipment, and to make the other jailers wait outside. Since Ning Xuema stated that she needed a quiet environment during that six hours of treatment, no one was allowed inside or to enter during that time period. They all have to wait outside. Tu Dao's psychokinesis cultivation was not low. Even if he could not walk due to his legs, he could still withstand the attacks of 20.30 ordinary brawny men. Naturally, he would not fear this thin and weak little girl with almost a non-existent innate talent. Even if they were alone in the same room, he was not a bit afraid of her causing mischief. If she dared to play any tricks, it won't even take a split of second for him to break all her bones. All the jailers also felt that Ning Xuema would not have any tricks up her sleeve. Hence, they merely gathered all the items she required and deposited them in the room before retreating outside. Tu Dao secretly observed Ning Xuema's small face. Her expression displayed the joy of someone who had been released from a great burden, as if believing his words that someone would come rescue her tomorrow. If she was like this, then it was less likely that she would cause any trouble, which reassured Tu Dao even more. After Ning Xuema had finished arranging her needles, she started to insert the needles onto his body. Every needle was inserted under his careful watch. None of them were inserted into his vital acupoints. At first, Tu Dao was rather wary and paid careful attention to where the needles were being inserted, but after a while he relaxed. Seeing her busily inserting the needles with a rosy face due to exerting strength, his heart began to have evil intentions. Although this girl was rather weak, she was very pretty. When she smiled, it looked especially sweet and heartwarming. If she was directly executed, it would be a bit of a waste. Perhaps, he ought to take her and let her have the taste of a man before. Thinking of this, a dark and evil smile surfaced on his face. One had to say, her acupuncture technique was weird but effective. After inserting thirty or so needles, a tingling heat spread and circulated throughout his body. It gave him an indescribable comfortable feeling. N. He hummed a bit and was about to open his mouth to speak a few words to her. However, upon opening his mouth, he found that he could not utter a word. It was like he lost control of his throat. Even if he urged himself, he was unable to say anything. What is going on? By reflex Tu Dao tried to stand up, but upon attempting to, he found that his limbs would not answer to his brain's commands. It felt like he had entered a nightmare. He could understand, hear, and see but could neither shout nor move. Chapter 64 Pretending to be a pig to devour the tiger, too, you are listening at novelfull.audio. It felt like he had entered a nightmare. He could understand and see but could not shout or do anything. Tu Dao's triangular eyes showed fear. He watched as Ning Xuema slowly stood up, smiling sweetly at him, but it became eerily sinister as it was reflected into his eyes. Sir, how are you feeling? Tu Dao broke out in cold sweat. 
He wanted to yell at her and at the same time call the jailers outside for help, but his voice failed him. Your medical skills are quite good, very good, very good. Chu Dao did not say anything, so he was shocked to hear his own voice answering her. His eyes turned round as he watched Ning Xuema fake a conversation between them. He did not expect that she could actually mimic his voice to perfection. Outside the torture chamber, the four jailers who had not been reassured about their superior's condition listened in, but upon hearing the conversation inside, they relaxed. Dot Tui Dao had instructed beforehand that without his order, they were not allowed to enter regardless of what they heard. Because the four jailers felt quite bored waiting outside without doing anything, they went to find a table so they could gamble with cards and dominoes. Sir, from the start, you never thought about letting me go right. Are you planning to go back on your word after I finish treating you? Am I right? Ning Xuema whispered softly next to his ear. Tu Dao perspired profusely, wanting to shake his head in denial, but even his head was paralyzed. Don't try and deny it. I've already seen through your attempt. Ning Xuema lightly smiled and unhurriedly picked up a small hammer from the table next to her, before swaying it in front of Tu Dao. Come now, tell me who is plotting against me and wants my life. Being unable to answer, Tu Dao could only roll his eyes around in a panic. Oh right, I forgot that you can't speak. How about this, I'll say the names one by one, and if it happens to be the B culprit's name, then you only need to roll your eyes up and down, and if it's not, roll your eyes left and right. How could he dare to tell her? Tu Dao gritted his teeth and shut his eyes. Aya, you're being really uncooperative. It seems like I have no other choice but to use more convincing methods. Although, I don't really have the heart to. When her final words fell, the hammer she held smashed down onto Tuidao's left leg. Her technique was special as it seemed like she randomly smashed onto a vital point of his bone and upon contact, immediately broke it with a crack. The pain caused Tuidao's body to tremble abruptly, making him break out in cold sweat. He opened his eyes and stared at Ning Xuema who laughed, making him almost suspect that she was not a little girl but the devil incarnate. Ning Xuema also did not speak any more useless words and simply asked him again about the mastermind's identity before her hammer smashed down once more on his body with every strike breaking a bone. Tu Dao had broken the bones of countless people in his life, but he would have never thought that the same thing would happen to him today. The suffering caused by his bones breaking one by one shook him to the core, making his complexion alternate from white to green and green to white. Cold sweat soaked his whole body. Although he could not shout or struggle, his face became extremely distorted, causing him to look even more hideous. Originally, he had thought that even if Ming Xuema managed to capture him, she would not dare to torture him. After all, this kind of torture required someone with strong psychological endurance, which ordinary people would not have as they lacked the heart to look, not to mention to actually torture someone. Furthermore, doing so hands dot on. Even more so, a pretty little girl being the other party. However, Ning Xuema had been able to smash all the bones in his legs without even changing her expression. Chapter 65 Pretending to be a pig to devour the tiger, free, you are listening at novel full dot audio. Note the emperor mentioned here is Chang Kong's emperor. The emperor, the one who saved Xuema before, had been changed to the ancestor. It will be less confusing in future chapters. However, Ning Xuema had been able to smash all the bones in his legs without even changing her expression. This allowed him to finally understand that the young lady in front of him was not an ordinary young miss, but a demon. After she finished breaking the bones on his legs, she started attacking his spine. At that time, he finally could not take it anymore and begged for mercy with his eyes. Are you finally going to speak? Ning Xuema stopped hammering and warmly asked. Tu Dao's eyes frantically moved up and down, an action representing him nodding his head. Ning Xuema's face displayed some regret. I had thought that Sir's bones would be tougher. What a disappointment. Then I'll start asking, was it the sixth prince? 
she started to list the names of all those she suspected. Sixth Prince, Crown Prince and the Princess were listed. Upon mentioning the princess name, Ji Yunyao, Tu Dao's eyes denied it at first, but after thinking for a bit, he confirmed her suspicion. It really was Ji Yunyao. Well that girl was certainly vicious. Wasn't the girl who was tortured to death earlier also harmed by the princess? That Ji Yunyao certainly proved to be completely obsessed with her crown prince brother. Adding to her jealous nature, any girl who the crown prince was even slightly good to would attract her wrath. It was very likely that Ji Yunyao was behind this scheme to harm Ning Xuemo. Ning Xuemo shook the hammer while she pondered in silence. Upon turning her eyes towards Tuidao, she saw that his eyes held a hint of shiftiness. Ning Xuemo was an expert at reading people's thoughts from their expressions. She immediately smiled and used the hammer to prop up Tuidao's chin. You're so disobedient, actually lying to me. Tuidao's eyes frantically rolled in an attempt to deny her statement. Ning Xuemo's pretty face tautened. What I hate the most is people lying to me. The hand holding the hammer fell. Crack. Crack. She broke Tuidao's jaw with the hammer. Tuidao's whole body felt so much pain he wanted to curl up but could not do so. His mouth stayed wide open like a toad and unintelligible indistinct noises came from his throat. If he could move, he would be rolling on the floor in excruciating pain. His clothes were drenched through with cold sweat. He wished he could have fainted but was unable to, causing the pain to reach a new apex. Ning Xuemo coldly looked at him. This beast had been inflicting pain on others all his life. Today, she would let him have a taste of all the suffering he had caused. She possessed a character which would repay gratitude and grievances. If they showed her kindness, she would reciprocate it. If they incurred her hatred, then they should await her wrath. To her true friends she would be like an angel, but to her enemies, she would be a merciless demon. Encountering her was the misfortune Tuidao sowed, his karma coming back to him. Ning Xuemo's torture methods were not worse than his, furthermore, she was a young lady who could move faster and more accurately than him. If the one being tortured was not him, he would have wanted to take her in as his disciple. After an hour, Tuidao's defenses had been broken down, and he was finally willing to speak the truth. When Ning Xuemo said the emperor, he finally expressed confirmation. Unexpectedly it was the emperor. Ning Xuemo had just randomly asked and did not expect to have hit on the truth. What had he been eating? He unexpectedly is unable to tolerate her existence. Why? Back then, Marquis Ning had expended a great amount of effort in order to protect the emperor's throne and the stability of the country. He could even be considered to be the emperor's right hand. Why would the emperor be so heavy? Handed with the marquis only daughter. After all, Ning Xuemo was not really familiar with this society's structure, and for a time she could not understand. Since she could not understand, then she might as well not waste her energy by thinking about this matter. Since it was the emperor who wanted to kill her, then her grievances would not be easily resolved. Chapter 66 Pretending to be a pig to devour the tiger. 4. You are listening at novel full. Audio. Even if she delays everything until dawn, she still would not be able to escape death. She could only formulate other ideas to escape. What a tragedy, she had not even transmigrated over for long and had already encountered such a high. Level boss. Did the god who managed transmigrations want to test her ability or toyed with her fate until she died? Not doing anything and passively awaiting for her death was not Ning Xuemo's style. She had to save herself, but first she had to get out of this prison. Her gaze landed on Tuidao, and she examined him. Her gaze was too unfathomable, causing Tuidao's heart to quiver. Ning Xuemo searched his body before finding the knife that was used to peel off people's faces. She examined it for a while, before warmly chatting with Tuidao, I saw that your technique for peeling off faces was rather exquisite, so I wanted to learn it. I guess I'll practice on you. If I don't peel it well, you will have to forgive me. 
Chu Yidao's face immediately turned green. His eyes opened so wide that they almost popped out from their sockets this was the debt he had owed Lu Yu. It did not take long before he would repay it. He had just peeled off Lu Yu's face, and now his face was about to be peeled off by another. He got enjoyment out of peeling other people's faces, but having his own face peeled off was undoubtedly the most terrifying nightmare. He looked helplessly at Ning Shuema as she slowly made her way over, the keen edge of the blade emitting a terrifying cold light. Two hours passed. Four hours passed by, and finally after six hours. The four jailers that were playing cards outside were starting to feel really sleepy which affected their performance. However, they did not dare to fall asleep and would always rouse themselves from their drowsiness. Naturally, they were worried for their boss, but because Ning Shuema had said that the treatment would require absolute silence, they did not dare to disturb out of fear of influencing the treatment's results. The four people were tiredly playing when suddenly, a miserable wail rang out, causing their hands to jerk in surprise. Those four's eyes widened in surprise as they cast aside the playing table in between them and ran into the room. The miserable wails came from a girl in a continuous string, each one more miserable than the last. When those four people were about to barge into the room, the miserable wails were suddenly cut off. Those four people looked at each other, and some people probingly asked, Chief, how is it? Did you make your move already? Although that miserable wailing did not sound like it came from a human, they could discern that it came from a girl's. There was no need to ask. Tu Dao must have started torturing the girl for a confession. All of you, come in. From inside the room, Tu Dao's voice drifted over. Only now did the four people dare to enter. The scene inside the room looked like that of a slaughterhouse. That girl was nailed to the wall in a star-dot-shaped manner, her clothes torn and tattered, her skin cut beyond recognition. Further down, she had been mutilated to the point that no one could differentiate her gender anymore. And in her sensitive part, there was a burning red iron rod inserted into it. Her face. Well to be honest, it was not there anymore. It was just a bloody mess though you could just make out the five orifices. Nose, mouth, eyes, ears. She was convulsing non-stop, her blood constantly flowing down, forming a bloody puddle underneath her. This scene was cruel, but those four jailers were already used to such sights, hence they merely casually glanced at that girl before turning toward Tu Dao who sat in his wheelchair. Staring at his legs, they asked, Chief, did that girl lie to you? Your legs. I've already said it. Boss has already seen many famous physicians who couldn't do a thing about it. How could this brat cure his illness? Right, right, that girl was only trying to delay for time but was seen through by Boss and was punished harshly. Chapter 67 Escape You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Right, right, that girl was only trying to delay time but was seen through by Boss and was punished harshly. Yeah, yeah. This little girl should have been taught a lesson. Actually angering Chief so much that he had to personally take action. This idiot. No matter how long she delayed she wouldn't have been able to escape death. Chief, are you tired? Let us take over. The four men tried to kiss up to their boss while eagerly preparing to take over. Tu Dao, who was in his wheelchair, slowly got up and took two steps forward. Under the gazes of his subordinates, he ceremoniously dusted off his tunic before yawning. And, I'll let you guys take over from here. Today I don't want it to be so noisy, so I seared shut her throat. She won't be able to say a thing. After she signs the confession deal with her. The four subordinates saw that he could surprisingly manage to walk so calmly and steadily and were astounded. Naturally, another round of congratulations and ass dot kissing started. Tu Dao remained gloomily cold and plainly nodded. These people were already used to his attitude, so it did not raise any suspicions. Every one of them urged him to go rest and assured him that they could take over from here. Tu Dao once again yawned and said, Then I'll have to bother you guys. 
if you guys complete your task well, you'll be rewarded. He waltzed out amidst the flattery of his subordinates. When the young girl who was nailed to the wall saw the four men, a light flashed through her eyes. She opened her mouth and tried to say something, but her voice had already been destroyed. Only incoherent sounds came out. Seeing the four men completely ignoring her, despair filled her eyes. After Tui Dao left, those four people slowly walked towards her. One held a knife, one held a pair of burning tongs, and one held a hammer. They fiercely grinned at her. Little girl, your medical skills are really good. Surprisingly, you managed to cure our chief's illness. But, our chief is famous for going back on his words. Did you think that after curing him, you would be let off for the night? Huh, you're really too naive. Whatever he was supposed to do he did anyways. Our chief is really very thorough, both her legs are already broken. One person gloated while poking at her noodle dot like legs. What a pity, such a fine lady, your looks weren't bad either but now you look like this. TSK, TSK. At first, us brothers wanted to let you have a taste of men, but now you've become this bloody lump of meat, and we don't feel any interest anymore. One person seemed to show regret. He he he. Old three, do you think our chief has already had a taste? Yet another person grinned as he raked his wretched gaze on the figure being pinned up on the wall. Dot, does this even need to be said? If she is like this, doesn't that mean he's already let her have a taste of his ecstasy stick? Once the chief samples a woman, he would nail them up like this. Old three swept his gaze over that person's private area. It was a mix of bloody flesh. Nothing could be made out of it anymore. The four of them stifled bored yawns and did not look any closer. They only wanted to get it over with and go to sleep. So, they inflicted 18 different kinds of torture methods meant to get her to confess. They must have been too tired and had forgotten at first that her voice had been destroyed, hence she could not speak up. They inflicted brutal tortures that left her hovering on the threshold of life and death before finally remembering that she could not speak. Someone allowed her to use her head to express herself. The person on the wall hurriedly nodded, agreeing to confess. They finally let out contented sighs and brought over the confession that had been prepared beforehand. Chapter 68 Committing Mistake After Mistake 1. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The skin on that girl's hand was in ruins and only the piece intact was the part covering the thumb. It might have been because of the pain, but her hands trembled as she tolerated it and strenuously managed to write out a few words, which caused the four jailers to be thoroughly incensed. What she wrote was. I am Tui Dao. Your mother. At this time, she was actually trying to pose as their chief. Those four were not polite and immediately initiated another round of torture, letting her wallow in hell for a few rounds, before another confession paper was taken out for her to sign. But they had not thought that after writing those same words again, she would even add another line. I am Tui Dao. She plotted against me, taking my face to pose as me. The pain made her unable to write properly, causing the words to look like dog scratchings. Fortunately, those four people could still read it. At first, they thought that she intentionally caused trouble, hence everyone, apart from Old Three, cursed angrily and wanted to start another round of torture. Old Three was rather careful though and stopped them, could it be real? Just now, he had acted the most. Although her skin had already been cut into tattered pieces, he faintly felt as if it wasn't that of a young girl's. The four of them looked at each other and reined in their impulses before carefully examining her. After a moment, all four slowly retreated a step. Beov, although the features of the person being tortured had been ruined beyond recognition, these four had their experiences built on torturing countless people and possessed an exceptional understanding about the human anatomy. A few features could clearly be seen not to belong to a female. Furthermore, this person was not young. Could it be that their chief was really swapped with Ning Shuamo? The one that they had wholeheartedly tortured was their chief Tuidao. Four pairs of eyes landed on the tortured person. 
the tortured person held a faint look of hope in his eyes, and without caring about the pain, he frantically tried to make some hand signals. They were the hand signals they often used, which outsiders would have no way of knowing about. Because he was nailed to the wall, his range of movement was restricted, causing his movements to be exceptionally slow. However, they were not the slightest bit different from their hand signals. Old Free blurted out, Heavens, it's really our chief. He wanted to leap over to help him off the wall. However, the leader of their group stopped him. Sullenly looking at that person before suddenly smiling coldly he said, You still want to pose as our chief. You must be tired of living. Old Two and Old Fourth, go prepare the dismembering tools. It seems like she's the real deal, actually not wanting to confess. They definitely could not acknowledge that it was Tui Dao. Tui Dao's character was cold and vindictive. He would seek vengeance for the smallest things. When they had been unaware of the situation, they had inflicted a lot of torture on him. According to his character, he would definitely harbor hatred in his heart, and if they let him go, they would inevitably suffer his cruel revenge. Since it was like this, then they could only keep committing mistake after mistake. The other three also understood this. So after glancing at each other, they also decided to go along with it. Tu Dao fell into despair. All these tortures had been carefully honed and enhanced by him, however, he would not have thought that he would have a taste of it today. Furthermore, the ones who were torturing him knew who he was but actually went ahead with it. This was what caused him to despair. He would not be able to survive those torture methods. In addition, those four people would definitely not let him survive. They had already decided to press further with that mistake. If he wanted to receive less pain, then he should just go ahead with their idea and sign the confession. When he finally accepted his fate and signed the confession, those four people let out sighs of relief. They brought him down from the wall and dragged him into a quiet room, as if they were dragging a dead dog. They forced him to imitate Ning Xiuama's handwriting and to write a letter saying that she wanted to commit suicide to avoid punishment. Chapter 69 Committing Mistake After Mistake, 2 you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Tu Dao had dexterous hands and managed to almost perfectly imitate Ning Xuema's handwriting. He was always proud of this skill, but now he was using it to sign his own life away. After the four jailers acquired all the required items in their hands, they finally felt reassured. Then, the leader of the group picked up a knife and tapped it against Tu Dao, while saying a few words, Chief, don't blame us. Who asked you to unexpectedly fall into that little girl's trap? Furthermore, this was all arranged by you. We were only following orders. Set your mind at ease and depart in peace. The knife plunged into Tui Dao's heart, cleanly and neatly eliminating a potential problematic issue. Beforehand, they discussed about what steps they were going to take in the future and had decided to burn Tui Dao's body. These were the orders from the higher dot ups. After obtaining the confession and suicide letter from Ming Xuema, they had to incinerate her body and leave no evidence behind. Originally, every step of the plan had been flawless, but Ning Xuema's deviance had not been factored in, hence causing such a big miscalculation. Only after cleaning up all traces of the body did they remember about the fake Tu Dao who happens to be Ning Xuema in reality. They rushed to the entrance to ask around. They were told that Tu Dao had left around 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. and was probably already at home sleeping. Those four naturally knew the way to Tu Dao's house and rushed there together. As they thought, Tu Dao had not returned at all. They had to find an explanation for Tu Dao's disappearance. Hence, the four of them discussed for a bit before suddenly forming an idea. They found a beggar whose stature was similar to Tu Dao's and got him drunk. Afterwards, they got him running, more like stumbling, around the lake in the center of the capital. Of course, along the way, people would see this Tui Dao, but they would not take further notice of someone as drunk as him. After all of that preparation, the four people pushed the drunk beggar into the lake. Only after seeing him drown with their own eyes did they feel satisfied. 
In the big lake lived a terrible beast as fierce as a crocodile, whoever fell in would become its dinner without leaving behind even a piece of bone. Hence they were not afraid that someone would drag the body out to examine it. The only thing that still worried them was the escaped Ning Shuamo. If she ran far away and never appeared in front of them again, then they would not be afraid. They were just scared that this brat would go and report this case and wanted to redress her grievances. This was bound to be a sleepless night for them. They got their good friends from all walks of life to help them secretly search for Ning Shuamo's whereabouts. Of course, they also checked the Marquis Mansion. By daybreak, they received a report about their fruitless efforts in searching. It appeared that she did not return to the Marquis Mansion last night. It seems like this cunning girl had already left the city. At this time, they had no other solution and could only send people to search outside of the city. If they could find her, they could silence her and ensure that there will be no future troubles. Be no calm they had been extremely busy last night, causing them to be exhausted. However, they still could not go back and rest, because that person would send someone to investigate the results. Therefore, they had to hurry back. Ji Yunhuang had stayed in the imperial palace the whole night to accompany Emperor Lu Xian. He had not been able to leave even for a moment. Only when daybreak came did the emperor allow him to go back to his residence. As he hurriedly left the palace, he ran into his frantic butler who reported to him the sudden bad news. Miss Ning who he had brought back to his residence had been arrested by the Ministry of Justice. She was arrested with the charge of murdering Marshal Hu's daughter, Hu Dai Chang. 